A frequent guest of this program, Congressman, welcome back. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for having me. I'm going to ask you the same question. Wouldn't you take this Gang of Six deal that includes income tax rate cuts? No, and here's why. Last night I actually read the proposal. What it is, it's more of a white paper, uh, sort of a wish list of what should happen. On Ways and Means Committee, obviously I went straight to the tax reform proposals because, as you said, we do need to lower and simplify the code. But here's what they said. They said you ought to lower the rate significantly, but you ought to maintain most of the, the, the key exemptions to it. Make it uh, or keep it as progressive, but lower rates on job creators. Make it cut taxes by a trillion and a half, but raise taxes by a trillion dollars. None of it is compatible with each other. We can do away with some exemptions, but it barely moves the dial on lowering the rates. Well, if we're going to be serious about it, it's a major overhaul, so I, they kept what makes it impossible to lower. I seem to be at odds with everybody sitting anywhere near me, and you, sir, on Capitol Hill. And, look, they are proposing to lower the income tax rates at the federal level. L much lower than they are now, much lower than they were under President Bush, all the way back actually to Reagan levels. The top rate of tax would be 29%. Right now it's 35%. Now, that's astonishing to me that there should be a proposal on the table to do that, and the President expresses some support for it. I think that's a breakthrough. You don't? The f I don't because here's why. They didn't finish the equation. The first part, you're exactly right. Lowering those rates is significant. But then they said, but let's keep all the exemptions and costs to keep those rates up. It's like saying, let's go on a diet. Let's keep your calorie level exactly the same rate. It doesn't work. And that's, I think, what's most disappointing. It's a wish list without the hard, hard, really hard decisions that have to be made if we're going to move the dial okay. and lower those rates. Right. Uh, let, let me summarize where we are then. Cut cap and balance passed the House last night, but I think you would agree with me, it's not going to go through the Senate, and if it did, it would be subject to a presidential veto. You don't Certainly like the Gang way. of Six plan, you don't like it, you won't support it. You wouldn't support the McConnell plan. So that means you're not in support of any of the three plans that I know of that are on the table. You will push us towards, a, not, not default, I'm not saying that, but you will push us towards a downgrade of America's financial reputation. Actually, no. There is still a plan very much on the table that people have forgotten about. The original proposal from the House Speaker, which is a dollar of cuts for every new dollar of borrowing authority, is still the solution today. And if the President will accept one and a half trillion dollars, then we extend the debt ceiling for that amount. And we keep working on the structural changes that actually avoid the downgrade. My big worry is we're going to avoid default. I'm, I'm almost certain of that. But I, I'm not so certain we're going to uh, avoid the downgrade because right. we're not going to do the serious cuts. Uh, so there is still very much a solution that can be accepted today, in my belief. Congressman Kevin Brady, you really did straighten that one out for us, and we appreciate that because that is a, a, you, an interesting other option that is on the table. Congressman, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, Stuart.